Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet and Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Charlie Lee, a crypto OG who needs no introduction. Doug and Charlie discuss whether the top is in, Elon Musk, Litecoin adding privacy, Monero's future role in the crypto sphere, and more. Oh, and an important piece of news, Litecoin is now live on Cake Wallet. As Doug discusses with Charlie, Litecoin is a great on-ramp to Monero for those that don't have access to an exchange that sells Monero for fiat. Just buy Litecoin with fiat and send it for super low fees off the exchange to your Litecoin Cake Wallet address. And then when ready, exchange it in Cake for fungible Monero. Thanks again, Cake, for making Monero more usable. Monero Talk starts now. Charlie, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Sure, no problem. You're, you're, you're fading into your background a little bit there. Yeah, it makes it pretty obvious I'm not actually on the space station. That's too bad. <laughs> So what's going on, man? Uh, you actually reached out to me, which is awesome. I think I had uh, at tweeted you years ago to try to get you on the show. Um, yeah, I, I saw that tweet like a week ago. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> like, yeah, that was like years ago. I, yeah, and I didn't reply. I didn't see your tweet back then. So for it, some reason, I ran across it. I don't know how. I think, yeah, I think people were recently liking it again for some reason and retweeting it, I guess, trying to, trying to get your attention. Which apparently we did, so. Yeah. So it's years in the making, this interview. Yes. Bit highly anticipated. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when's Magical Crypto Friends coming back? Can we expect that to come back anytime soon? Or is that a, is that a done deal? Um, maybe after when after the Beatles getting back together. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You know who the only person that loved that show more than me was my... Uh, my five-year-old daughter at the time that that intro which is this uh i think that got her into crypto more than anything else you're talking about friends yeah the magical crypto friends <laughs> yeah um the, the intro was was pretty well done samson actually did it okay um yeah i, I don't know i think um maybe maybe we'll have a, another show uh we'll see we'll see we, we're all we've been all so busy so no, I know. Well, I was certainly I was a very big fan. So one one of your big fans, and I also love the conference that you guys put on. The one that was in person. I mean, that was that was a uh, that was definitely a highlight for me in terms of uh, being in the crypto sphere. That was awesome. Yeah, I I thought it went it went really well. The the conference. Yeah, it's too bad we weren't able to do do the do another one. But you know, COVID happened, and then everything just got pushed back. Yeah. You think we'll ever see one of those again? Uh, less likely than a show. So if we do, if we start doing shows again, then we're more likely to see a conference. Maybe we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess you know everybody's going to want to want to hear this question. So do you think we topped? I know I know you're an expert at calling the top. I believe last time uh, uh, someone some would say you were the you were the cause of it. But not not me, but I think I think you were you were somehow blamed for the top last time. The uh, the the crash the after you sold your sold your Litecoin, so uh, if that is true, uh, and you and you are a master at calling the top, ha have we topped once again? What do you What do you think? Well, first of all, it's I'm. It's amazing that people think I I have the money or the power to to crash the whole market from my small amount of Litecoins that I actually held, um, but I mean that that wasn't like I knew what was going on. I, I just I know there's a cycle, right? So 
I had no idea when the cycle would end. To be to be fair, I thought at that cycle five thousand was the high for me, and it hit twenty thousand. Right, so who who knows? No one can really predict what's going to happen. But I think for this cycle, I don't think we've hit the high yet. I think we've had a correction. Um, these bull markets, like 40 percent correction. This one was like like fifty percent, but that happens quite a few times throughout the whole bull market. I mean, it's because how volatile it is, we need the correction to kind of, um, to consolidate and for people to have, to kind of huddle and go back in, right? To buy more coins. So that happens a lot and I'm not surprised by it. So nothing, it didn't really like shake me out or anything. I think this correction, we've seen the bottom of this correction. So I'm waiting for it to come back up. And, and if it was the top, at least they'll be blaming it on Elon Musk this time, not you, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what is your what's your thinking there? What what is Elon up to? To to be like any idea what what he what is he doing? Is he uh, is he a true Dogecoin believer? Uh, does he really think proof of work is is a waste? Um, but which I don't really get because Dogecoin uses proof of work. Uh, what 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 yeah, is he I doing? Don't, I don't know. I think he just shoots from the hip. He just tweets whatever he's thinking about at that time and. Um, he saw, he probably saw an article about mining waste and then decided to make a decision to stop supporting it. Just maybe he's getting pressure from his board or in his investors that Tesla shouldn't be supporting Bitcoin, which has an image of energy waste. Whether or not that's true is besides the point, right? So, um, so he decided to, to make that tweet and then, and then like after he caused the whole market to crash, he posted that. Tesla has diamond hands, right? right. <laughs> so he's he, whatever he's just doing whatever he wants, and that, that actually helped the market come back a bit. So he's he's pretty much manipulating the market as he as he's just having fun. Yeah, you, you think he's trying to teach people a lesson? I mean, I have to believe he understands crypto than he's leading people on to believe, right? I, I have to believe that he truly understands what it's all about, right? That I don't know. That, no, I don't think he. I don't think he understands the energy usage that that much. Um, I don't think he understands. Um, he he made a tweet about increasing block size by ten, and then decreasing fees by like a hundred. Basically, just something that would cause a lot of centralization to to the blockchain um, without really understanding what he's actually suggesting. Do you think he knows that, I mean, at least I think the purpose, and I'm pretty sure you agree with me here, that like the, the main value proposition of crypto is, you know, the censorship resistant nature of it. Do you think he appreciates that aspect? No, I actually don't think he, he does. I don't think he appreciates that. Not, not as much as like Michael Saylor does, obviously. So yeah, he's, he's still got a lot to learn. Yeah. So what, what's your current, what's your current take on, on crypto? Um, what do you, uh, you know, what, what projects do you currently value that you see value in? Or is, is it, it's obviously not just Bitcoin because you've created Litecoin um, and you're, you're still working on Litecoin. So how, how do you see the crypto space? Do you think there's a couple of valuable projects or? Um, I'm focused on kind of the money aspect of cryptocurrency. I think one of the things that um, that really needs censorship resistance is money. And censorship resistance decentralization is expensive. Just by by design, it's, it's not um, efficient. So things that don't really need censorship resistance and decentralization um, can't really afford to pay for that decentralization, right? So I think money is one of the few things that need it. So that's what I'm focused on. And so, so did you, when you created Litecoin, was that, I assume you, you had the same thinking then you already knew uh, or had that same idea as to what the purpose of crypto was. So when you created Litecoin, was it really out of, out of a way to improve upon things or what, what were you thinking when you created it? Um, to be honest, I wasn't thinking too much about it. Uh, I wanted to create something that was, um, I actually positioned it as silver to Bitcoin's gold right from the beginning. So as something that complements Bitcoin and 
um, having two coins is useful. Um, I've always saw that Bitcoin at that time kind of fulfilled the needs of everyone. It was, it was fast, it was cheap, it was secure, it was decentralized. Um, but over time, you can't have, it can't be perfect in all, this, all these categories. Right? Something has to give because um, as, as the network grew, because, because the decentralized blockchain is so inefficient, so you have to compromise in one of these areas or one or multiple of these areas. And what actually gave, um, gives Bitcoin value is the censorship resistant part of it. It's not the cheap and fast part of it because PayPal is cheap and fast. Visa credit cards is cheap and fast, right? That's not what gives Bitcoin value, right? At that point in time, it could compete in that aspect, at least layer zero or layer one, but over time it wouldn't be able to. And I knew that kind of not, I had, didn't think too much about it, but like I kind of knew that um, going in and I thought Litecoin could complement Bitcoin in that aspect where it can be faster and cheaper. It will be less central, less decentralized um, and it will be less censorship resistant, but it will be cheaper and faster. And I saw how Bitcoin and Litecoin can work together in that aspect to fulfill the needs of uh, payments. And obviously now there are layer two solutions, which also is great because it um, it makes things instant and also extremely cheap. And you have different kind of security trade-offs with that. But I think these things are good enough for, for payments. So that's kind of how I see things going. Yeah. So do you see Litecoin now competing with Bitcoin? Do you see them as competitors? Um, to a certain degree, it's always competing because you're competing for people holding money in terms of where they're putting in Litecoin or Bitcoin or a bit of both. But I also see them as as complementary. Um, Bitcoin as mainly for a store of value and Litecoin for, for payments. And it's up, it's up to people how they use it, right? I I use Litecoin quite a bit even now. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not invested in it, but I have Litecoin for, for payments. And I, whenever I send people money, I, I use Litecoin if I can, if I can. You never reinvested in it since since you sold that time. You never. No. Oh wow. No. So what what's your what's your thinking there? Why why not uh, own the project that you're that's essentially yours? Um, because I don't really need to, and like people say, like if I don't own it, then it's then they then they don't own it. They won't own it because I don't own it. But then if you think about it, like what's the point of decentralized money if you need, if someone has to, if the creator has to own a large portion of it? It's not like I had a large portion to begin with, but it's it's kind of silly for decentralized money to have, um, to require someone or me to own own it for it to succeed, right? So I'm still working on it full time. Um, I'm working on adoption, working on development a bit. Um, and I see the, Owning it is just a distraction, right? If I'm distracted by the price, then I'm not really um, focused on what actually helps Litecoin succeed. And price is not everything, right? Hmm. So you'd see that as getting wouldn't wouldn't that help though? Give you more of an incentive? For, I, I get so like what in what scenario would it get in the way? Like you mean like a design decision where you're saying, you know, where you're thinking more about pumping the price versus exactly right. So I have incentives to to pump the price. Um, to care more about the price than than actual adoption and usage of the currency, right? It it's over the long term it's aligned, but short term wise it's not necessarily aligned. And in the end, Litecoin was launched um, fairly, so it's not like I pre mine like whatever twenty million Litecoins that I I have and I just dump them all. So whatever Litecoins I, I sold was just a small amount that I bought and mined myself. So it's not like it affected the market any. Um, it's just the perception, actually. The perception of it was worth the, worse than the actual selling, right? The selling didn't move the market at all because it was a small amount. Sure. Um, but the perception of saying that I dumped all my Litecoins at the high is just something that <laughs> was blown out of proportion, but it is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, but that, that's still your, your main focus now in crypto. That's like what you're working on is, yeah. is Litecoin. Yeah, but I'm always pushing for Bitcoin adoption too. It's not just, I never say like invest in Litecoin, it's going to be the next Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is still going to be the, the main store of value, the, main, the cryptocurrency reserve, crypto reserve currency.
I actually find myself telling more people to use uh, a Litecoin than Bitcoin, believe it or not, uh, really for the, the use case of trying to get them into Monero, right? So uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to get Monero for, for some people, um, yeah. but you can get Litecoin easily on, on like Coinbase. Yeah. So, you know, what, instead of buying Bitcoin, which has high transaction fees, you might as well buy Litecoin and then you can, you know, move it out of Coinbase and make your way into Monero. So I actually find myself telling people more about Litecoin than, than Bitcoin for those purposes. Cool. How do people trade Litecoin from Monero? Uh, well, even in Cake Wallet, right? So are, are you familiar with Cake Wallet? They actually just added yeah, Litecoin. Yeah, I saw. So yeah, that was, so they, was awesome. They have an exchange built in there, and you can uh, swap between Litecoin and Monero. Yep. Yeah. I was actually talking to them the other day, um, suggesting that they should build in built in um, atomic swaps between the currencies. It would be cool to be able to do atomic swap between Litecoin and, and Monero. Yeah, do you see that happening anytime soon? Or do you see any work being done there? Um, there, are, there are atomic swaps being done by, by different exchanges and different um, products. Like Decred has a um, decentralized exchange that does atomic swap between Bitcoin and Decred. And I think they also added Litecoin, but it probably wouldn't be hard to also add Monero in it. Um, so yeah, there are, there, are, there is work being done on that, on that front. Yeah. There's a couple of projects that are working on, you know, Bitcoin to Monero atomic swaps. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, have you heard of Thor chain? Yeah. Sure you've heard of Thor. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, I think we're going to see that being added to cake once they figure out how to do the swapping between Bitcoin and Monero. But yeah, I was just curious if there were, uh, actually people working on the swapping between Litecoin and Monero. Do you know of? I don't know. I don't know. But maybe Cake Wallet might start doing something like that. We'll see. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that using, using Bitcoin is, is just hard right now on chain um, because the, you have to pay high fees, obviously. And then you, you aren't also aren't sure if it will make it into the next block. So I've done atomic swaps with Bitcoin and it's waiting for that first confirmation is, <laughs> is kind of stressful and it's, it's, it's a pain. But with Litecoin, it's, it's pretty simple and Monero. Has your opinion of Bitcoin changed at all? I know you say you see it as a store of value. Um, that's its, its main use case. Have you always looked at it that way from, from, from the early days? Or did you initially look at it as what the white paper was titled as, you know, a peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, cash system, essentially, digital cash system? Um, like I said, I think Bitcoin initially just fulfilled the purpose of doing both, at least this, I'm, what I mean is Bitcoin on chain. Now you have second layer solutions and the, I compare it with like um, gold and paper currency. So gold being layer one and paper currency being layer two. Previously before fiat currency, paper currency is backed by gold, right? So you put gold somewhere and then, then you have paper currency and you can more easily trade and spend the paper currency than you can do with gold. And if you ever want to get back to layer one, you go to your bank, give them the paper currency and redeem the gold, right? So that's very similar to how Lightning Network works today, where you um, open a channel, you deposit Bitcoin into the channel, and then you have LN um, money, right? LN Bitcoins, and you can more easily move that around. But if you ever want to get back your um, layer one Bitcoins, you just close the channel and retrieve the Bitcoins, right? So the best part about this solution is you can't remove the backing, right? You can't remove the layer one backing of Bitcoin. Whereas with paper currency, um, the government removed the backing and made, made it so that you can't redeem gold with your fiat money anymore. And that's kind of the beauty of Bitcoin layer one, layer two solution is you can't remove the backing. So I still see Bitcoin as um, fulfilling that vision of a peer to peer electronic currency, uh, electronic cash. It's just on a different layer, which is which is fine and the, the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, what I struggle with is the fact that, you know, on, on the protocol level, Bitcoin is really just digital gold at this point, if people want to believe that, and I feel like it, that's really the only thing that's giving it value at this point, is everybody deciding to use it as a store of value. I mean, why not make Dogecoin the, the digital gold or Litecoin for that matter? I mean, wh why Bitcoin? 
because it's more decentralized and more secure. It's just the, it's the most decentralized, most secure cryptocurrency out there. So um, it is what people think it is, right? If people want, people think Bitcoin is valuable because of this aspect, then it is valuable. Right. So. You right, but like, like, but gold. Do you think? I mean, gold wasn't didn't randomly become gold, right? It was because I guess it had has certain attributes. Um, correct, correct. And Bitcoin, it's there's a network effect, right? So, um, if another commodity came out came out that has similar or better attributes than gold as being money, um, it will take a lot of work and a lot of time for that to replace gold as as money for everyone right um so like platinum for example can potentially people can say it's more rare than gold um but it hasn't really taken over um as money for people and i i guess what i'm getting at i'm sure you kind of see where i'm going um so the fact that bitcoin lacks fungibility which mm -hmm. I personally think is kind of a core tenant to to what you would want to have in money, something that you're using as as digital gold. The fact that it lacks that, does that mean something such as Monero that has it uh, built in? Could that potentially uh, be a better form of money and or of digital gold? Potentially, potentially. I do I do like Monero a lot, um, but there are trade offs. So. Um, I think the audit, auditability is a, is a trade-off with um, with a privacy currency like Monero. So you're trading off uh, fungibility for that. Um, and there's definitely a market for that, but I don't see Bitcoin going towards the direction of Monero where it would do um, full privacy and then give up the auditability of it. Um, but yeah, I think there's a market for, for a coin like Monero, but I'm not sure it will be able to take over Bitcoin as the as the number one top currency. That'll be that'll be a tough ask. And really it all boil because of network effect or really because of this audibility issue that you're talking about? Because of the audibility and also the network effect. So if if Monero is has everything Bitcoin has and privacy, the network effect will be the only thing that it has to overcome. Right. And eventually it will. Right. But because of the auditability issue, it's more than just the network effect. I now, think. I mean, we, we do know that Monero can be audited, right? It's just you're relying on your more reliance on math than actually just being able to add up all the numbers yourself on a ledger. There, there's some trust there that the math is correct, the cryptography is correct, and that it was properly implemented. But doesn't that just apply to other aspects of all crypto? I mean, uh, Bitcoin has had implementation issues. It's it's had bugs. So why yeah. is that uh, critical for Monero, but not critical for for Bitcoin? It's the it's the fact that if there is an issue, you may not know that there's an issue. I think that's a, a hard pill to swallow for for most people. Um, or it would take longer to know. I guess. I guess eventually you would know, right? It just wouldn't be as instant. Yeah, eventually you'll know, and by then it'll be too late. So, or potentially too late, right? So, um, where would I compare that to? If you, if you compare that to gold, right? It's like you have another mineral that um, that has all the properties of gold. It's more fungible, but you don't know. Like in the ocean, there might be a ton of it, right? And then that that will destroy the kind of the scarcity of that of that um, commodity right so that's that's an issue that people would have but we know gold doesn't have that problem except actually it probably does it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't ask for if a lot of gold that crashes down to earth then you also, also have a huge increase in <laughs> in the quantity of gold but yeah something like that it's it's a it's always going to be a concern uh, for for good money do you think over time people overcome that? Because like I said, I mean, really Bitcoin kind of faces the same issue. It's just not instantaneous. But over time, as people begin to, uh, you know, the longer Monero exists, the longer it's looked at and the longer uh, trust is built up in, in it, do we get to the point where people are like, okay, uh, you know, we can trust the fact that there's no secret 
uh, you know, a mission that's happening within Monero. Co code has been audited over and over again. Yeah, you know? I, I, I honestly, I don't, I don't think we'll easily get there because um, crypto gets broken all the time over time. So the cryptography Monero relies on would be broken by um, just over time or by uh, quantum computing, whatnot. So I think that's always going to be a concern. Right, but the quantum computing would just as easily affect Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Um, but it will affect Monero. When, if it affects Monero, you won't see the problem until it's too late. If, it's, if it affects Bitcoin, then everyone will see it right away. And you can easily, not easily, but you can kind of stop, do an emergency hard fork, fix it, and move on. With Monero, you wouldn't know until like, whatever, six months, a year later. And by then, it's you can't undo the damage. So that's the, yeah. that's kind of the trust, the difference in the trust. That you yeah, well, one of the interesting ways people have been looking at it as well, it would actually give people uh, a chance, you know, a fighting chance with Monero. Um, kind of everybody would be on the same footing as opposed to in Bitcoin, maybe, you know, I, I, I guess pe the fact that people wouldn't know that it happened uh, would cause it to kind of crash slower as opposed to just, you know, in Bitcoin where it would be like catastrophic, you know? I mean, it's just an, it's an interesting take on it. I don't yeah. necessarily agree with that. But. And then you, you hear like what I'm seeing with Monero today is, you know, the prices is, is low, right? I expect a lot of people expect Monero to be doing better um, in terms of price wise, market cap wise um, than it is today. And, I hear people talking about it. maybe there is a uh, emission that is undetected and someone is just printing Monero and selling it and that's depressing the price. That's probably FUD. It's very likely FUD, um, but you can't, you can't, um, you can't say any, you can't say that's wrong for sure. And that's a problem, right? Someone can create this FUD and people will believe it and you can't deny it because you don't know. I can't prove that that's not happening. And with Bitcoin and Litecoin today, you can, right? You can just point to the count. It's not more than 21 million, whatever it is today, 17, 18 million. And you can defeat that FUD right away. But you can't with Monero and that's always going to be a problem. Yeah, I guess it really comes down to a philosophical choice for a lot of people because what you're getting on the other side is, is pure fungibility. Correct. So... I, I often, I've recently been hearing you say how, how Litecoin is adding fungibility to its protocol. So what exactly are they doing? What are you guys doing to add fungibility? We, we have a project called MWeb, which stands for uh, Mimblewimble Extension Blocks. So we're adding the Mimblewimble technology to Litecoin as an extension block. Uh, what that means is, um, so extension block is similar to a side chain, except that it's um, kind of an attached side chain. So every block, there's a main chain block and then there's an extension block and you can move coins between the two. So, and then once you're in the extension block, um, everything uses the Mimble Mimble protocol to move money. And then you can uh, peg out and pull chain, pull coins back to the main chain whenever you want. Okay, so it's kind of a, it's an opt-in uh, privacy yes. as needed, kind of like a Zcash thing. Correct, it's not, Correct. It's not. It's not like Monero where it's um, by privacy by default or privacy on all the time. Uh, so it's a. It's an opt-in. Once you opt into the MWeb, uh, then everything is uses uh, Mimblewimble, and it's not. It's not perfect, right? It's not. The privacy is not like Monero. It's a little bit different. Um, we focus on more scalability. I think that's very important, um, and that's one thing that. Um, Monero has an issue with, which is it's not as scalable as as Bitcoin. Um, so we're we tackling it from a diff, kind of a different angle. You don't think Monero's a scale? Well, I, I wouldn't they they both come down to second layer solutions, right? So what where where do you see there being a difference there in, return, in terms of scalability? Um, just the fact that the um, transaction output grows indefinitely. Um, I don't think it's a problem today, but it could, if it gets used a lot, it could potentially be a problem where everyone, all full nodes have to hold on to the whole transaction output, um, every transaction outputs for the rest of time, right? That could, I think that that is going to be a problem for scaling. 
How about this thought that, uh, you know, second layers might even uh, work potentially better on something like Monero because it has a tail emission. And so miners will always have the incentive to mine. Uh, so there's no fear that all transactions move to the second layer and that there's then no incentive to mine on the base layer. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I don't think that would be a problem with Bitcoin because you, you, there will also there will still be main chain transactions. If you if you're moving million dollars, you want to use the main chain for security. You can't really do it with second layer, and there's always going to be open and closing channels. So the main chain will always be full. I would say so. It's not. I don't think that's a problem with moving the transaction fee so that there's no miners mining the main chain. I do agree that having a tail mission is useful. Um, it's definitely a different monetary policy. Um, the interesting thing with with Litecoin is because Litecoin is merged mining with Dogecoin and Dogecoin has a tail emission. So effectively Litecoin has a tail emission also. Litecoin miners are gonna be mining both Litecoin and Dogecoin because Dogecoin has a tail emission, even if Litecoin's block rewards get really small. So that that's an interesting dynamics that we haven't seen. It's, we're starting to see it play out, um, but it'll be interesting what happens like 10 years, 20 years down the line. Um, yeah. Uh is it becoming a, a, what's that expression? The tail is wagging the dog situation. So uh, <laughs> yeah. has is Doge uh, starting to eclipse Litecoin in ways? So uh, it used to be that you're merge mining Doge with Litecoin. Are you now merge, you know, essentially mining Litecoin with Doge? It all depends on how you look at it, right? In, in the end, the merge mining protocol is just two coins are kind of merged. Miners are mining both and getting both rewards, right? So. Yeah, previously a few years ago, Doge reward is like maybe five percent of Litecoin rewards. Now Doge rewards actually exceed Litecoin rewards. So miners are getting more Doge in dollar terms than Litecoin for every block, for every certain number amount of time. So it's an interesting dynamics how that's playing out, and it's not causing problems. It just means miners are are just making more money. There's like a the Litecoin pool it pays out uh, pay per share. And it used to be paying out like uh, 105%, for example, because they're selling Doge for Litecoin and then giving the, the miners 105% of the share that they're they're providing. Now that it's paying out like 400%, something like that, that, that changes obviously daily. So for the shares you're providing, it's paying out four times as much Litecoin as you would normally expect if you're just only mining Litecoin because it's mining Dogecoin and selling that for Litecoin. It's good for miners, for sure. And just to just to jump back to you know the the, the adding fungibility to Litecoin. Um, so why why did you decide to make it opt in as opposed to default? Was it uh, purposes of you know staying on exchanges, not getting booted off exchanges? What what was the the design decision there? Why why did you guys decide to go that route? Um, well, for one, we didn't want to give up the auditability on the main chain. And two is because definitely regulatory concerns. Um, so we kind of want to be liquid on exchanges and also provide ability for people to easily move their coins to something that's more fungible. Um, definitely we'll see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, so just like Monero coins on the M website of things is not as auditable um as the main chain so there's going to be from the main chain perspective there's going to be like a bucket of coins that's sitting there that represents coins on mweb right so if you add up all the coins on Litecoin main chain it will still be at most 84 million um so if there's any issues on the crypto or implementation side of mweb then it will be uh it will be isolated to the mweb side of things it won't affect the main chain so it's kind of a, I think it's an interesting way for us to do it this way, and we'll see, we'll see how well that works. But is is it fun? Are you adding fungibility though? Then in that respect, because I mean, now you have you know you have these two types of of Litecoin, right? So you have, yeah, uh, you know your your transparent Litecoin, and then your, you know your your private Litecoin. So we're adding fungibility once you're you're in the. M website of things. So 
it will take, we'll see what kind of adoption we get, right? So if, if we get people adopting the end website, and if you can fully stay on that side, then everything you do there is, is more fungible than your main chain Litecoin. So in some sense, it's not very different from if you bought Litecoin and then Atomic swapped it to Monero, right? You can think of Monero as kind of a side chain or whatever of a Litecoin, right? It's just, you're just moving it from one to the other. So it's not very different um, functionality wise. The only difference is one Litecoin is one Litecoin on both chains, right? So you're not switching currency and affected by the exchange rate between the currency and there's no spread. Right. But the, the transparent Litecoins can be, um, you know, marked. Uh, so sure. when, when you move into uh, the non-transparent Litecoin, you could be kind of seen as somebody who's looking to to wash your coins, so to speak, right? Yeah, I mean, the same thing is happening today when people are buying and selling Monero on, on an exchange. Right. Well, I mean, I think that's that's more of a, a stretch, right? Because to assume that everybody that's using the protocol uh, is using it for, you know, uh, dark purposes. The same thing for, for MWeb, right? I would move my coins to MWeb, not because I want to use it for, for illicit purposes, right? Same thing. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I don't see why you would. Well, I guess because you said for other reasons, right? There's other reasons why you, why you are doing both. So do you anticipate that, you know, exchanges are, are, aren't going to react to this in any negative way? I've talked to a lot of the main exchanges before, like going down this path there. Um, I expect they, they won't bother supporting the M web side of things. They will just support main chain and they can do their chain analysis of the main chain transactions. I, they don't, I don't think they will see a problem with it. Um, but we're not never hundred percent sure until it happens right? until we launch it. Yeah. So. so do you have any insight there? I mean, you used to work at uh, Coinbase. I think you're, you're one of the first employees over there. Mm -hmm. Um, you're certainly around in the early days. I think you were you had you already left once they added Litecoin or? Uh, no, no, no. I left soon afterwards. So I was I I was planning on leaving um, before they added Litecoin. Before they made the decision to add Litecoin, um, I was already working on I was working on adding Segwit to Litecoin and already doing like mostly Litecoin stuff and just doing part time Coinbase, and then. Um, I kind of already gave up on them adding Litecoin because I was getting so much pushback. Um, and then before before I left, um, before I actually physically left the company, they they made a decision to the Litecoin volume like there was like went really high because of Segwit. And then I made a tweet at Brian Armstrong about adding Litecoin to Coinbase, Coinbase.com. And then he tweeted back and said, "Let's do it." I'm like, "Wow, okay, let's do it." So. Um, so we eventually did that before I left. Can you tweet him to add Monero and then maybe we get that out of it? <laughs> um, I don't why, think you Why aren't they, Monero. why did they never add Monero even from the early days? Um, it's probably regulatory pushback. I think it's just, even if, even if they're not getting a firm no from the regulatory bodies, they, it's not worth it for them to kind of risk it. Right. They don't get much benefit from adding Monero versus any of these other coins and not worth risking it, I would say. But Zcash, they, they have because of this, this opt-in privacy versus default, you think? Yeah. Um, actually, have they added Zcash? I, I'm not... I think so, right? Don't they have Zcash? I don't know. I know Gemini has Zcash. Oh, Gemini has Zcash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. coin based it too. Maybe they don't. Maybe I'm wrong there. Okay. I, I actually don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it's the optics of it. Right? Mm. So it's pushing like opt in and saying it's it's good. <laughs> and that's why exchanges added it. It's all it's all optics, I think. Do you think that's going to change? I mean, Kraken has had Monero on and they seem to be fine with it. You think we're going to, you know, move in a direction where exchanges are going to start to be okay with Monero? How, how do you have any opinion there on, on what the regulatory landscape is going to start to look like? I don't really know. I mean, on one hand, we see exchanges starting adding things like Zcash. 
and then on the other hand, we see other exchanges like delisting Zcash, Monero, and Dash just because they're um, considered privacy coins. So, I, yeah, I don't really know where where we're going. I I hope exchanges will will add Monero and just give people an option to to use something that's truly private. Do definitely hope they do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hope I've been I've been waiting, hoping to see that. Yeah. Um, my hope is, you know, I still have hope for Coinbase to, to add uh, Monero. I mean, so many people ask me, I live in New York too, and everybody's like, how do I get Monero? How do I get Monero? Uh, so what, what do you see the future? Well, I mean, what, what is it going to look like in terms of crypto? I mean, um, in terms of, and this is Monero talk after all, uh, do you, what what role do you see Monero playing? I mean, do you think it's just going to kind of be off to the side, uh, you know, used uh, on the dark web and never really take the main stage? What what's your insight there? Where do you see Monero being in the in the crypto sphere? It's a tough question. I think. Monero definitely has a has a tough time with that because um, it's really hard for Monero to kind of be be on the main stage. Just is yeah. Given the way things are today, I think when um, it'll take it'll take quite a bit of time for people to change their mind about it. Right? For people to get used to be used to cryptocurrency, to be used to um, fungibility and privacy being um, a right for people to have. I think, I personally think financial privacy is important. Um, even if you're not doing anything anything bad, you don't want people to know how much money you have, um, uh, what you're doing with your money. And yeah, I think it's important. And I really support Monero and the way Monero is doing it. Um, but I think it's gonna be tough for it to become mainstream. Um, but it doesn't have to be like mainstream to be successful, right? It can be a very successful um, fungible currency used by a small percentage of people, but still be extremely successful. Yeah, world world is certainly a big enough place, I think, where it could uh, be its own island. Um, I ultimately see, you know, if if that's the case, then I ultimately see, well, why not? Would it not just be bigger? You know, it's kind of like liberty itself, right? So, uh, you know, it's not like we just... Maybe it started with one little island, you know, we, we called the United States of America, and then eventually everybody else caught on to the fact that they want liberty too. Um, do you kind of see it that way? Do you have that like cypherpunk idealism? Do you, do you look at things that way? Like, you know, uh, this this is ultimately, that's like one of the tenets, what it's really about is, is about liberty? I, I do think so. And I think um, even today, Monero can, is very useful. So what's important in the future is the ability to easily convert Monero to anything else, right? If there's liquidity for converting Monero to anything else, then it doesn't matter um, if exchanges don't support it, right? If you can easily buy Litecoin, Bitcoin, and convert to Monero, then and if that done in a way where you don't really need to kind of know to, to be very technical, then that's, that's good enough. Right. You can store your money in Monero. No one can track you. And if you really want to spend it and the merchant only accepts Bitcoin, then just do it on the fly conversion to to Bitcoin. Do you think that's going to have a reaction on the, I mean, a lot of people obviously in Monero land are excited about the fact that atomic swaps are coming, Thor chain, like we were talking about. Do you think that will have an effect on the market? Once, once we, you know, once swapping into between Bitcoin and Monero or Litecoin and Monero is as simple as going on Coinbase, but done in a way that's, you know, all perfectly decentralized or in a way where you don't need to, uh, you know, reveal your identity or work with a third party. Do you think that will have a, a, a strong effect on, on the market? I, I definitely think it will have a strong effect on the market. But I think one other thing you need is um, better user, um, better UX, right? The user experience of, um, I think things like Cake Wallet is helping, um, but you need more of that, right? 
to be to be honest, I haven't used Monero recently, so I don't know what the current state of things with um, user experiences in terms of. I use Quick Cakewalk a little bit, but I have I don't know how the the Monero um, uh, core client how well that's working today. From what I from my experience back then, like many years ago, it's the experience is, has a lot of places that needs improvement. Right, it's not easy to to store Monero. Um, I think they now finally work with hardware wallets. Right, it's not easy to store. It's not easy to transact. So things like that. Once those improve and make it really easy to store, transact, buy, and hold, then I think it will have a, a large effect on on the um, adoption and the price of Monero. Yeah, I mean, I'd say we're pretty much there. Like is it Cake Wallet, really, you know, it makes it just as easy as using uh, Litecoin or Bitcoin at this point. Um, mm -hmm. You know. No different, you know. Download the app and store, send it as easy as anything else. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I think marketing, right? So like Do Doge ha has perfected the ability to market Monero. Um, you know, it's it's not as uh, I guess memeable or uh, as Doge. What 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 are your thoughts there? I mean, um, um, yeah, I mean, have a cute mascot. And they'll take you far. <laughs> um, you have someone like Elon Musk pumping it, and that helps a lot too. I mean, to be fair, Dogecoin was kind of just hanging around for for years, right? It had it, it had a nice pump in, I think 2015, 2016, um, but then it, it kind of dropped like ninety percent, and it's been was hanging around. And the reason why it hung around was because it was merged mine with Litecoin, and it you couldn't attack Dogecoin because it's protected by script miners. Um, and then with Elon Musk pumping it, it came back roaring very strong. So who knows what could happen with Monero, but maybe work on having a cute mascot. That could definitely help. <laughs> yeah. What's, uh, a, what's, a, what's a cute privacy-oriented animal? Maybe a, a fluffy pony, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> What, um, you know, so I, I didn't want to go too much into your how you got into Bitcoin, because I know you probably told that story a million times. Um, but just out of, out of curiosity, uh, you know, were you kind of were you one of these guys that were thinking about these this these things before they got invented? Like, were you uh, thinking about digital cash before you read the Satoshi white paper? I'm just curious, you know. Uh, not not particularly. I wasn't really. I'm not a like a cypherpunk that was doing this before, before Bitcoin was created. Um, but my experience with with money is uh, is with just with gold. I've always seen gold as a better form of money than fiat currency. The other things I've seen before Bitcoin is um, I used to play a bit of poker online, and I saw that um, when the poker sites got shut down, they targeted the the payment methods. Right, they made it impossible for you to deposit money into these poker sites via banks or credit cards or whatever. And once they block that, there's just no way for people to move money. And I saw that as just, that was eye opening that um, they can easily take something that I think is totally legal, right? Just it's a game of skill and not a game of chance. Even, even if it's a game of chance, it's your own money, right? You should be able to do whatever you want with your own money. If you want to gamble it away, you want to waste it, then it's your choice. And the fact that the government can come in and say, no, you're not allowed to use money to play poker online because they were accusing um, Vegas or the casinos in Vegas or whoever, right? That just, that was very eye opening for me. And when I saw Bitcoin and then saw poker sites using Bitcoin and saw like Silk World using Bitcoin where the government or anyone cannot stop you from spending money the way you want, that was, um, yeah, that was very compelling. So is that is that uh, an eye opener now? Now the, it's, it seems like people are moving away from Bitcoin for those purposes and moving to things like Monero. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are still using Bitcoin for that. It's just uh, there's definitely more uses in Monero for just to to be more um, for people to have more control over their money. Yeah. That's why that's why I'm a big supporter of Monero. Yeah. What do you think about um, 
mining potential uh, censorship of mining. Uh, we're seeing com uh, compliant miners, compliant mining pools. Do you have any uh, reaction to that? Um, yeah, I think I think it's pretty silly. I think it's yeah for them to for compliant mining pools to come out to say we're compliant miners. Because um, in the end, it's not like they're going to fork away if there's a non-compliant transaction in the previous block. They're still going to build on top of it. So, so and then in the end, what's the point, right? So, it is kind of bad if everyone does that, right? But I think Bitcoin is res resilient to that. It's built in such a way that honest miners or miners are profit-driven, and they would mine uh, any transactions as long as there are, as long as it pays the fees. Right, so I think the, the the system is designed to fight against this kind of censorship, censorship, and I'm not that worried about it. Yeah. How about this argument, though, that you know most of the miners these these days are just you know really really big guys that have warehouses uh, filled with ASIC miners that are only produced by a few companies, so it's it's not as decentralized as as it as we think. Or as some think, in that you know they may they may be more compelled to be compliant than we think because they you know they're companies after all, and they want to uh, work nicely with the regulators and the countries they're in where they're you know using their electricity and they have their warehouses of miners going. Do you, do you have uh, thoughts there on that on that argument that's being made? I think it's not it's not that decentralized, but it's decentralized enough. To be censorship resistant, um, it is true. A lot of miners are in, are in China, so if China's crack down on miners and tell them to um, censor this transaction, it could it could be a problem. But I don't think it's it's that big of a problem. There are miners all over the world, um, so not too concerned about it. But if it if it does happen, um, if it does happen, then we'll it's a problem we have to address, right? So yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. It's definitely not fully decentralized, um, as decentralized as people ho hope it would be. Um, but I think over time it will become more decentralized. Um, but yeah, it's not. I, th I don't think it's a big problem. Do you have any concerns with Bitcoin? Is there anything you look at? You're like, oh boy, uh, that that's well, obviously the, I guess the fungibility, right? Is that, is that it, or are there are there other things that you that you think about? Fungibility is, is an issue. I think it's one of the main properties of good sound money that's missing from Bitcoin um, and Litecoin, obviously. Um, but it's not it's not deal breaker, right? So things that I might be concerned about is just um, more regulation around around cryptocurrency on and off ramps that could hinder adoption. Um, I'm a bit concerned about uh, just tax, just hassle of spending Bitcoin. Like every time you spend crypto, you have to figure out your gains on it or losses on it and report that. And that's just a huge hassle if you're just using crypto to buy coffee. Um, so that's a that's a concern. I hope that would be addressed. And then... But um, you, it's solving it on... Oh, sorry to interrupt your thought there, but solving that on the on the protocol level, within the protocol, well, you're just saying dealing you with... Can't, you can't solve that on the protocol level, right? So people are working on updating the tax laws to to say like if you're purchasing stuff you don't have to pay taxes on the gains right if it's something less than a few thousand dollars then you don't have to worry about tax gains on your on your purchase um new laws like that would help and um yeah you can't fix that on a protocol level um yeah and then there's there's always a concern about um uh quantum computing breaking cryptography right if it if it breaks hashing, that's probably not a big deal. Um, but if it breaks like public key encryption and let people steal your coins, then that's a that's a big issue that we have to address before it, before it breaks. Are you working on anything to that effect on, on in Litecoin? No, we're not. Um, not right now, at least. I mean, we've thought about it a bit, but we're not we're not quantum computing experts, so it's not something we we can tackle ourselves. Um, but this is a problem for the whole finance finance industry, right? If quantum computing breaks crypto cryptography, then like 
you can steal money from other people's bank accounts pretty easily. So that's a problem that everyone has to f have to face when that happens. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, what what are your thoughts on you know back to mining for a second? So in in Monero, they've gone down the road of more staying aligned with the ideals of one CPU, one vote, uh, trying to uh, you know essentially turn the CPU into the ASIC of Monero. How how has that worked? Actually, I haven't been following. Is it working well? The, yeah, it seems to be working well. So uh, are you familiar with RandomX? Uh, not too familiar. I obviously heard of it. Yeah. yeah so that, you know, that's the proof of work that Monero is now using. And uh, it's it seems to be to be working quite well. That's cool. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea to have um, to be able to, that will make things more decentralized. Yeah, so anyone with a CPU can do it. The downside is a botnet could um, mine a lot of coins or take over the network. Uh, not take over the network, but it can have some control. So botnets are an issue when CPU is the is the ASIC, right? Yeah, uh, I believe you know RandomX does have some uh, you know protections against that. I'm going to get criticized now by the Monero community because I'm not giving uh, the the best response to that. But they they do have some uh, good. Uh, protections against that is my understanding. Um, is any any thought of Litecoin ever going down that direction, or you guys are 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 fine with mining as is? I imagine most of it's mined with ASICs. Yeah, it's probably all of it's mined with with Litecoin ASICs or Script ASICs. Um, I think it's fine for now. Um, I do think about it every now and then, but it's not, it's not a huge concern. Um, but it's also going to be very hard to switch um, mining algorithm right now for for Litecoin. Um, yeah, just so no plans to to switch to something different. Yeah. What uh, what what else can we expect from Litecoin? So adding fungibility. What what else is on the roadmap? What are some of the other big things you're looking to do? What is, I guess what what is the ultimate goal with Litecoin? Where are you trying to take Litecoin to? Um, I mean, the ultimate goal is just to be money, right? To be a currency that people use on a daily basis to store their money and to spend. So, things I'm working on is just having more places that accept Litecoin. So, working with um, payment processors to accept Litecoin to support Litecoin, so that. Um, merchants can easily accept Litecoin and convert to fiat currency. Um, making sure Litecoin is 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 liquid. I think liquidity is is very important, and that's something that um, Monero is running into. Right? It's it's not as liquid, so it's hard to um, to get Monero first of all, and it's also hard to um, sell a lot of it and keep and not move the price. Right? So if it's if a coin is very liquid, then merchants can easily accept it and convert it. Any amount to to US dollar or whatever fiat currency they want, without moving the market and affecting their their sales. So liquidity is very important, um, and adoption make it easy for people to um, hold and store Litecoin, have Litecoin support in different wallets, a lot of ATMs supporting Litecoin, stuff like that. Just increasing adoption and awareness. I remember Litecoin. There was news that it had acquired a, a bank at some point. Um, yeah, we. This is a while ago. We we have a a small stake, um, nine percent stake of um, WEG Bank in Germany. So we, we've been working with them on that. They're they're working on supporting cryptocurrency for for people who have bank accounts can also have like crypto accounts side by side. So and also supporting merchants to let merchants um, accept cryptocurrency. Is, so is there progress being made there? Since there I mean, is. That, that's old news now, so I'm just curious what, what did yeah. that what did that turn into? I, up, um, I mean, things are slow. Just dealing with with banks, uh, with regulators, it's just it's just slow. Um, they're conservative, um, but stay tuned. They're they're working on something that that will be announced uh, later this year. Actually, um, fingers crossed. <laughs> things don't get delayed. But yeah, they're launching some crypto products. And when when it was said Litecoin acquired a bank or has an, what it, what does that mean? There's like a Litecoin foundation, or it was uh... yeah, it's it's just a Litecoin foundation. So Litecoin okay. foundation started in 2016. Um, I'm the managing director of the Litecoin foundation, and 
we support Litecoin wherever we can, and we hire Litecoin developers to work on um, Mimblewimble, for example, and also Litecoin Core. And we, um, uh, yeah, we partner with uh, Token Pay on this um, bank deal. So Token Pay owns a percentage of the bank also. And, and yeah, so that's, it's not Litecoin acquiring a bank. It's actually the Litecoin Foundation owning a small percentage of a, of a bank. All right. I normally ask people, you know, where, where can we find you? Where can people learn more about you? But that, I certainly don't need to ask you that question. I think uh, anybody watching this show would probably know you already, I would hope. Um, but thanks so much, much, man, for everything you do. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, thanks for yeah. being a, a crypto early adopter and uh, helping, you know, get us to where we are today. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it was, I had fun being on this show. Um, yeah, good stuff with, with Monero. I'm happy to see all the progress going on with Monero. What is it? I guess I'll ask you, you know, one more question. What, what most excites you about the crypto space right now? Is there anything in particular, is it, or is it still just good old money? Is it, I mean, what, what are you most excited about? What? Uh, I would say like companies investing, putting their corporate treasury in, in Bitcoin um, and other cryptocurrency is definitely very exciting. Uh, I personally didn't see that coming, um, but it made a lot of sense. It's a better form of money. Uh, better form a way to store their value than than US dollar. So I think it's it it does make sense, and I'm excited to see more companies doing that, uh, both announcing them or privately. I'm sure there are a lot of companies doing it uh, privately and not telling people about it. Do you think we'll start to see that with other cryptos? Them adding, you know, instead of just adding Bitcoin to their to uh, their treasure. Hard to say. I think Bitcoin is still like the the best store value. Um, it's a crypto reserve currency, right? So um, it's kind of like other countries storing U.S. dollar versus um, euro, for example. Maybe they'll start. Maybe other countries are having storing euro as a reserve, but U.S. dollar is still the main reserve. So in in the crypto space, Bitcoin is still the main reserve currency. All right, Charlie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much and we look forward to being back next week.